What's going on guys, I'm RSB and welcome back to another farm video. This farm video is going to be for a coral and seagrass farm. This farm I custom designed because all of the other seagrass farms that I've found really consume a whole lot of bone meal. So I wanted to make one that was really efficient using as little bone meal as possible, but also give you really, really good rates at the same time. And I think that I found a really happy mixture between the two. The reason for me designing this farm was specifically this reason that you're going to see in front of you. You can see that there's seagrass on this block here. If we check our dispenser here, we have 47 bone meal inside of here. These two observers are going to make a clock which is going to continuously power this dispenser. And since there is grass already up here, we should not lose any bone meal. So let's go ahead and turn this clock on. You can hear the dispenser clicking, but as you can see, we are losing bone meal very, very quickly, but we are not harvesting this at all. This is one of the reasons why these farms are very, very inefficient. So I really wanted to design this farm to have a design around this problem here. And with these farms, I came up with the perfect setup. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at these. This farm I designed in two different designs, one smaller one and one larger one. However, the smaller one can be tiled really as much as you would like one after another, as long as you kept repeating the process over and over. And you could tile this as far as you would like to tile it really. The smaller farm here produces about 20,000 items per hour. And that's gonna be about 39 stacks of bone meal per hour that it's going to take to produce that number. However, 39 stacks might sound like a lot of bone meal. It really is very efficient. And fortunately, bone meal is very easy to get. If you break down the math between the 39 stacks of bone meal into the 20,000 items, you can see just how efficient this farm is. So moving on to the dual farm, this dual farm is going to produce about 40,000 items per hour. And that's going to use about 78 stacks of bone meal to produce those 40,000 items. Again, I know 78 stacks of bone meal might sound like a lot, but bone meal is very, very easy to come by and very easy to obtain large quantities of it. These farms will produce coral along with coral fans and also seagrass as well. The 40,000 items per hour was achieved harvesting both seagrass and the coral. If you're wanting to harvest both the seagrass and the coral, then you're going to have to get you some shears and enchant them with silk cut and also enchant it with unbreaking to allow the shears to last a little while longer. Although the shears do break pretty fast, even with the unbreaking on. So that's something that you might want to prepare for and make multiple shears with. If you are only wanting to harvest the coral or coral fans, then you want to use a silk cut pickaxe. It doesn't matter whether it's gold, netherite, diamond. As long as it has silk touch on it, you will harvest them and it will not harvest the grass. I would recommend having unbreaking on it as well. And then if you want to harvest just the seagrass and not harvest any of the coral, then go ahead and just use you some regular shears. I would recommend enchanting these with Unbreaking 3 because the shears do lose durability very, very quickly. With that being said, let's move on to building these two. I'm going to start with the smaller farm first, and then after the smaller farm is built, we'll go ahead and build the larger one. So for the small version of the farm, you are going to need one minecart, two powered rail, two detector rails, three regular rails, one redstone torch, 18 dirt. However, this can be sand or gravel if you would like. Anything that coral and grass can grow on will work. However, if you use sand or gravel because they are gravity blocks, you're going to have to have a block underneath them to support them. You can use six buttons. Any button that you would like will work. You're going to need two dispensers, a bunch of bone mill to fill inside of those dispensers, nine hoppers, six wooden stairs. You can use any wooden stair that you would like. However, I would highly recommend that these are wooden because wooden has a high durability against pickaxe mining. You're going to need nine solid blocks. Any solid blocks will work as long as redstone can pass through them. You're going to need a stack of glass. This glass can be any other block that you would like as long as it holds water. However, I like the glass because it is see-through. You're going to need six chests, two redstone dust, one lever to turn it on, two water buckets to move the water, and then you're going to need 18 disposable temporary blocks. 
then you're also going to need your method of harvest, whether it be a netherite pickaxe with silk touch and unbreaking to get the coral, whether it be shears just to get the seagrass, or whether it's shears that has silk touch and unbreaking three enchanted on it to make it last longer and to have the ability to harvest both seagrass and the coral. With that being said, let's jump into it. So to get started building this thing, we're going to need to mark out a spot inside of the ground and we are going to mark it out five blocks deep by nine blocks long. This does not have to be chunk aligned. However, I would always recommend chunk aligning anything that has to do with redstone. But since the redstone is so simple on this, I would not say that it is extremely necessary to chunk align it. However, if you leave this farm running, it is going to continue to consume bone meal and it will also have a chance of deleting your minecart going across the chunk border. So keep that in mind. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go all the way to the left front corner in front of you and you're going to skip this block and then you're going to place down a solid block here and then you're going to make a row of solid blocks all the way to the right until you get one from the last block here. Once you're here, you want to place down a temporary block and a permanent block here. Break your temporary block. And then on the other side, you want to place down a temporary block and then a permanent block. Break this temporary block. So you should have a shape that looks just like that. Now on the left hand side, you're going to go to this block here. Grab your redstone torches and place a redstone torch right here. Once you've done that, you're going to grab your rail and you're going to place a powered rail here with a detector rail to the right of that, a regular rail to the right of that, another regular rail to the right of that, another detector rail, and then you want a regular rail and a powered rail. So it should look just like that. Once you've done that, come to directly behind these detector rails and you're going to place redstone here and redstone here with a dispenser here facing up and a dispenser here facing up. So it should look just like that so far. Once you've done that, come around to the back here, grab your hoppers and place two hoppers facing into the back of the dispenser coming out and then do the same thing on the other one. Two hoppers facing into the back of that dispenser coming out. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and grab your dirt I recommend using dirt because it's easier to work with. However, you can use sand or gravel as well because the coral and seagrass will grow on those. However, if you use those, you're going to have to have a block underneath them to support them. So keep that in mind. So you want to crouch and place a piece of dirt on top of each of your dispensers. And then on this left hand one, you're going to come out here to the side by one and then towards the back by one and towards the front by one. And then you want to come all the way to the right hand dispenser here, and then come out to the right by one, come forward by one, and then come back by one. So it should look just like that. Then you can grab your dirt and go ahead and fill all of this in. So after you filled it in, you should have a three by six platform. We use a three by six because the bone meal, whenever you bone meal in the center of a block will only grow by a three by three formation. So if we have a three by three next to each other, we're going to get the most blocks that we can bone meal and grow coral and seagrass with. So now it's time to get our glass in place. So what we want to do is we want to place a temporary block here and a piece of glass here, remove the temporary block, and then bring this over by an additional two. So you should have three blocks. And you want to build this up by three. Just like that. So you should have a three by three glass platform in front of you. Then you want to place a temporary block here on the middle of the right hand side. And then build a glass block out to the right hand side and remove this temporary block. Bring this all the way across until it lines up with the end of the dirt. And then you want to jump and place a piece on top and bring it all the way over. Just like so. Once you've done that, you want to go all the way to the right hand side, place another temporary block here, and then a permanent block here. 
go ahead and break and remove that temporary block. And then bring this all the way across. And all the way down. Just like that. Now we want to go to the right hand top glass block here. And place down a glass block here. And then bring this all the way across. Be sure not to close yourself inside. If you would like, you can fill in these corners with glass. However, I designed it this way, just to make it a little bit more friendly on the resource side of things. Now grab your stairs, and we're going to place our stairs upside down, facing away from the inside of that enclosure. Just like that. You're going to place six stairs down, that are upside down facing to the back. It should look just like this. Now you're going to grab your buttons. These can be any buttons that you would like. And you're going to line the underside of these glass blocks all the way across to hold the water inside. So it should look just like that. Now that you've done that, you're going to want to come around here to the right hand side. You're going to want to grab your chest and you also want to go ahead and grab your hopper. Place down a item chest here and here, where it lines up with the very edge of your marked out area. And then on the right hand side, you're going to crouch and place a hopper on top of this, the chest here. Then you're going to jump on top of that hopper, crouch and jump and place two more hoppers underneath you facing into the hopper directly below it, where all of the hoppers are making their way into the chest. And then on the right hand side, you want to go to the top hopper, and you want to crouch and place another hopper into the side, and then go on the left hand side and place another hopper facing into the side of that top hopper. So you should have all of your hoppers funneling into that top hopper, which is going to make its way down inside of the chest. <coughs> You should have five hoppers here total, and then also two here and two here. Once you have done that, you want to come back up here to the top, and you're going to extend this glass out by two, and then you're going to come to the front here, and then you're going to place down more glass here, extending it out this way, and then follow this all the way across until it lines up. So it should look just like that. The next part is going to be a little bit tricky, but follow along, I'll walk you through it. Because if we don't do this correctly, then the farm is not going to work correctly. What you want to do is you want to grab your temporary blocks, and then you also want to grab your water buckets. If you're in survival, you want to make a infinity pool of water, so you want to break out a two by two hole in the ground, just like that. And then you want to place a source block of water here to the top left, and then place another one to the bottom right. This is going to make a full pool of water, and you can pull as much water out of this as you would like. You want to go inside of your area here, and you want to place the water down on the dirt here. You don't want to place it on any of these wooden blocks because they are stairs and they are water loggable. And if you water log these, all of the water is going to go out of the back of the farm and destroy the redstone underneath of them. So you want to start by placing your water here all the way to the left front. And then you want to place your water here to the, the left back. That's going to allow the water to flow with resource blocks flowing directly towards the right of the farm. Then you want to come to the back here. And on the third block in, place another water source here. Skip a block and another water source here. And then you want to place another water source here. Once you place this final water source block, this entire thing is going to fill up with water source. The next part is going to be the tricky part. So follow along. You want to go to the very center and place down a block to scaffold up with and then you want to jump up and place another block under you and then another block behind you then you want to go and break that block that you just placed down 
and it will refill with water and make another water source. Then you want to fill this entirely up on the second layer. Fill this fully with all of your 18 pieces of cobblestone. So it should look just like that. Once you have done that, you're going to grab your water bucket and on the very left part of the farm, that is the farthest away from these hoppers, you are going to place water here and you're going to place water here. This is going to make three source blocks here at the end, flowing in and flowing all the way to these hoppers here. After you've done that, you're going to remove all of this cobblestone that you just put in. The reason for the cobblestone was to make a flowing water stream over top of all of our other water source blocks. So now that all of those are broken, we can go over here to the left hand side. And you want to grab three more of your temporary blocks and place on these three hoppers and then go ahead and break these three. This is going to allow the water to stop flowing here, where it's not going to push the item over top and off the edge if the hoppers do not pick them up. We are just about done with this. However, we need to make sure that all of this is water source blocks. So once you're in the water looking around like this, it might look like all of these are water source blocks. However, they technically are not. So we need to make sure that these are all water source blocks. So what you want to do is grab your water bucket and you want to place down a water source here. And then you want to place down another water source here. This center block here is going to be a water source block. So you can take your empty bucket and pick up water from right here. And then you want to go ahead and fill all of these in going all the way across. It's better to place down too many buckets and you really can't place down too many buckets but you want to make sure all of these are filled up with source blocks or else none of your coral or seagrass is going to grow once you have done that you are just about done the only thing left to do is to grab your chest and come around to the back side here and on these two hoppers you're going to place down a chest here and a chest to the right of it and on this right hand hopper, you're going to place down a chest above it and a chest to the left of it. These stairs allow us to be able to open up the chest with the stairs above. However, they also hold in the water and they are also a block that has a relatively high mining durability against a pickaxe. The only thing left to do is to fill these up with bone meal. So go ahead and grab some bone meal. Then place some bone meal on each chest. Then you can go to the front, all the way to the right hand side, grab your lever, place a lever down on top of this block here. And then you want to place down your minecart. Then place it on this powered rail here. Jump inside of your minecart, grab your silk touch pickaxe or your shears, whatever you would like, and turn on the lever. As soon as you turn it on, you're gonna start going back and forth. Every time you go over top of the detector rail, it's going to shoot bone meal into the dirt, allowing for the coral and the seagrass to grow. So now you want to hold down your right hand button to start mining, and you want to kind of move around to find the sweet spot I recommend on the stairs in front of us to aim at the very last row inside of the texture of the stairs and this will tend to get most all of the coral as it starts to grow back. The reason why this farm is so efficient is because it's not using any bone meal that doesn't actually get used. Every time that we pass over a detector rail it's going to dispense one more bone meal causing all of the stuff inside of the 3x3 area to grow. Once you are done with the farm, be sure to turn it off because if this cart keeps going back and forth, every time it passes over a detector rail, it's going to continue to use bone meal. So make sure that you turn this off so it does not use up all of your bone meal. 
come around to the right hand side and this is where all of your portals going to be along with inside of your inventory you can see how much coral we just got just from the small couple minute afk session that i just did so with that being said if you only need a farm that is this small and produces a small amount of coral then you are done and i thank you so much for watching if you think that this video deserved a like then please hit that like button for me if you like this video and you want to see a lot more videos like it then please consider subscribing and hit that bell notification that way you get notified each and every time i upload a new video and thank you so much for watching however if you need more coral than this at a faster rate then stick around and i'm going to show you how to build the larger version of this farm so let's jump into it all right so to build the larger version of this farm you are going to need 10 chests 13 hoppers one minecart four dispensers 36 dirt however as i stated before these can be gravel or sand if you would like with those being gravity blocks, you will need a block underneath them to support them from falling. However, technically any block that the coral or seagrass will grow on will work. You're going to need two stacks of glass. I recommend using glass because it is see-through. However, you could use any block that you would like here. You're going to need a lever to turn it on. 12 buttons, you can use any buttons that you would like. One redstone torch, 10 rails, two powered rails, four detector rails, 15 wooden stairs. You can use any wooden stair that you would like. For this, I'm going to be using oak. However, I would highly recommend using wooden stairs. That way you have a high mining durability against using a pickaxe. You're going to need 18 solid blocks. These solid blocks can be any solid block that you would like. However, redstone has to be able to pass through them. You're going to need four bits of redstone dust, a whole bunch of bone meal to fill up your dispensers, two water buckets to transfer water, and then you're also going to need 18 temporary blocks such as cobblestone and then you're going to need your method of harvest as well so using a pickaxe with silk touch and unbreaking a regular shears or shears that's enchanted with silk touch and unbreaking this all depends on what you're trying to harvest whether it be the seagrass or whether it be the coral itself so to start building this thing, you're going to need to mark out a area that is five blocks deep, like last time. However, this one needs to be 18 blocks wide. So you have a five by 18 area marked out. Once you have done that, you're going to come all the way here to the left hand side. And on the very front left most corner, you're going to skip a block, go in by one and place down a solid block here. And you're going to follow this all the way across until you're one block from the end, just like that. And you want to place down a temporary block, the permanent block on top, and then break your temporary block. Go to the other side, and you're going to repeat the same thing. Place down a temporary block, a permanent block on top, and go ahead and break your temporary block. At this point, you want to grab your redstone torch and place it underneath this block, coming out of the left-hand side, just like so. Then you're going to grab your powered rail and place a powered rail down here, just like so. Then you're going to grab your detector rail and place a detector rail here. Grab your regular rail and place down two regular rails, a detector rail. Grab your regular rail again and place down five. And then place down another detector rail. Grab your regular rail and place down another two regular rails. Place down another detector rail a regular rail, and a powered rail. So it should look just like this. So to repeat, we have a powered rail, detector rail, regular, regular, detector rail, regular, 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 detector rail, regular, regular, detector rail, regular, and powered rail. On this block to the right, we're going to grab our only switch and place that here and go ahead and leave that off for now. And then we want to grab our redstone dust and go up to this first detector rail here and place a redstone dust directly behind it. And then do that for the other following three. Make sure that these are directly behind the block that the detector rail is on. So it should look just like that. Just like before, we're gonna take our dispensers and on the back side of where this redstone dust is, place a dispenser coming up behind all of this redstone dust. 
there's going to be four in total and make sure that they are all facing straight up. It should look just like that. Then you're going to go on top of each of these dispensers and place down a piece of dirt just like before. And then you're going to surround this entirely with dirt. And then you're going to surround each of these blocks entirely with dirt. So on top of each of these dispensers, you should have a three by three area of dirt, just like before. So you're going to have a three by six pad here on the left and a three by six pad here on the right. You should have a three block gap by three block gap in the center of these two pieces of dirt if this is done correctly. After we've done that, it's time to set in our glass again. So we are going to grab our glass, place down a temporary block here, and a piece of glass here. Go ahead and break that temporary block and build this across by three. Then you're going to build this up by an additional two. That way you have a three by three block in front of you. On this middle right glass block, you're going to place down a temporary piece of glass, come out by one and place down a piece of glass there. Then you're going to bring this all the way across. But instead of stopping here like the last one, you're going to continue to bring this all the way across until it stops on this side of the dirt. So it should stop right there. Once you've done that, you're going to place a temporary block here and then a piece of glass here. Jump and break your temporary block and then bring this all the way across just like last time. So it should stop right there. Now we're going to go back over here to this side and on this block that is on the outermost side of the dirt, you're going to bring this out and over by three and then you're going to come to this side here and bring this out and over by three. Then you're going to go directly underneath these and bring this all the way across and this all the way across as well. So it should look just like that. Once you have done that, you're going to grab your chest and on this piece of rail that is in between these glass, you're going to walk forward and you're going to turn to the side. It doesn't matter if you turn to the left or turn to the right, depending whatever way you want your chest to face. And you're going to place down a chest here and a chest here. And you want to grab your hoppers Go to the very far end of that chest and make sure that you are in the middle of these three blocks. And then crouch and place a hopper underneath you facing into that chest. And then place down two more underneath you. So you should have three hoppers facing into that chest. Then you want to crouch and place one on the left hand side of that hopper. And then go to the right hand side and crouch and place one on the right hand side of that hopper. Just like before, both of these hoppers should be facing directly into that top hopper, funneling down into that double chest. Make sure that these are facing accordingly or else your items are not going to find their way into your collection chest. Once you have done that, you can go ahead and grab your glass again. And then on the far most right side of the farm here, you're going to come to this piece of glass towards the front and you're going to build this out in additional one. And then you're going to bring this all the way across until it stops at the other side here. Once it stops there, you can go ahead and place a temporary stair block, climb up here, climb up here, and then you're going to place down another layer of glass going all the way across here. Some more glass here, wrap this around to the back and bring this all the way across to where it all lines up to where it's all three blocks high. Once you've done that, you want to come to this far side here. And on this very far edge, you want to build this down by three. Just like that. This is going to keep the water in. And then you're going to grab your stairs. And you're going to place your stairs facing out again towards the back then make sure that they are all upside down. So you should place six there, and then you should also place six stairs here. 
So it should look just like that. Now grab your hoppers and place two hoppers here, facing into the back of that dispenser. Two hoppers here. Two hoppers here. And two more hoppers here. For a total of eight hoppers, if you want to make sure all of these hoppers are facing directly into the back of all of those dispensers, then you want to grab your chest and on this far left hopper, place a chest here and a chest to the right. And then on this hopper here, you want to place a chest here and a chest to the left. Go to the other side and repeat this process. This left hopper here, you want to place a chest here and a chest here. And then on the right hand hopper, a chest here and a chest here. These are going to be all of your bone meal chests that's going to hold all of the bone meal for the farms. After you've done that, you want to go ahead and grab your buttons and come around to the very front of the farm. Directly above on this piece of glass that is directly above the dirt, you want to place six buttons across here. And then on the other side with the dirt, place six more buttons right here. So it should look just like that. These buttons are going to hold the water in. However, it is going to allow you to aim through the hole and harvest all of the coral. Next, we want to place our water in. So we're going to grab our water bucket. We're going to do the same thing that we did before and make a two by two hole in the ground and place water in the top left and water in the bottom right. This is going to make our infinite pool of water. Once you've done that, it's time to go inside of the farms just like before and we're going to place down water here and water here and then you're going to turn to the right do not click on these i know it's tempting but like i said before these are stairs and they will waterlog and flood water you do not want that so make sure that you are clicking on the ground here and you are going to skip a block from here skip this block and then put it on the third block out See how this here, all of this just turned into a source? That's exactly what's going to happen once we continue this. So we're going to skip this block and place another block of water here. We got more sources that occurred. We're going to skip this and place another block of water here. Now all of it is sources. Once you got that filled in, now we're going to start on the other side and fill it in. So just like you just did, we're going to take our water blocks and we're going to place down a source of water here and here. This is going to turn into a source of water in the center so you can pull water out of that. Then you're going to skip two blocks here and on the third block out, you're going to place down another source of water, grab some more water, and then you're going to skip a block and place down another one here and then another one here. This is all going to turn into a source block. Make sure that you don't have any flowing water at all on this lower place and then once you are done with that you are going to grab your cobblestone the 18 pieces of cobblestone for filler blocks you're going to place down all of the cobblestone on the second layer here right in the middle right on top of the water you don't want to place it in the water where it takes the water out you want it right there in the middle and then you're going to take your bucket of water and you're going to place down one source block here and one source block here once you have done that, you can go ahead and remove all of this cobblestone. That way you can use it again on the other side. Just make sure that you do not punch any holes inside of the aquarium at all. And then you're going to jump down here and pick up all of your cobblestone. I don't have any atoms dropped because obviously I'm in creative mode. Pick this up and then we're going to go over to the other side. Grab your cobblestone again, and then we're going to lay out the 18 pieces of cobblestone right here on the second layer again. We're going to place this all down. Once you've done that, turn to the left, and you are going to place down a water source block here and a water source block to the right. The center water block will turn into a water source block, and again, you can use this to fill up your bucket again. Make sure that these water source blocks are on the very outermost edge. That way it's flowing in towards the hopper. If you notice, there is no moving water over top of the hopper. This does not have to be removed like it does on the smaller farm because the water is not going to cause the items to flow out of the hopper or over the edge or anything. They're just going to stop in this neutral water right above the hopper and that's exactly what you want. Both sides should have flowing water pushing in towards the hopper. 
once that is done, you can go ahead and remove your cobblestone again and go ahead and pick up all of your cobblestone. Jump down here and pick up all of your cobblestone. And then you want to fill your water buckets back up and you're going to fill all of this in on the second layer. Even though it looks like all of this is water, it's not technically water source block. So we have to make all of this on the second layer water source block or else our coral or seagrass will not grow. So take your water bucket and place down a water source block here and here. Pick up water from in the center and then you're going to place your water all the way down on every block. It's better to place more water than you need to make sure that you have all of the source blocks taken care of. Once you fill in the vast majority of them, the water should auto fill and turn everything into source blocks anyways. However, if you do miss one, then you're going to have a spot to where the coral doesn't flow up into the water stream. It'll just kind of hang around the bottom. So if you see any coral or seagrass that's not floating up into the water stream, then you probably need to add some water at that spot. Now we're going to go to the other side and we're going to repeat the process. Place down water here and water here. Grab some more water there. And then we're going to fill all of this up as well. All on this middle layer. And it's very important, don't add any water to the stairs down here or else they will flood. And it's also very important that you're not going to add any water to this top layer because that's going to mess up the water stream as well. So once all of this is filled up with water and making sure that all of this is water source block, we are good to go with that. So we're going to move on to the next step. Now we're going to go around to the back and what you want to do is you want to grab a bunch of bone meal and you want to place down your bone meal in each of your chest here on the back that takes the bone meal. I would recommend dividing this up by four, whatever your total amount is, divide it by four. That way you're putting even amounts inside of all of your dispensers but that's just me. You don't want one to have a bunch in and then the other one to run out. So I always make sure that I evenly fill these up. You can also hook these all up to one chest where they all evenly fill as well. It all depends what you wanna do with it. I did also leave some extra stairs. You should have three stairs left over if you want to place stairs here. You can break that glass, place a stair there, a stair there just to make it look a little bit better. However, I'm sure you guys are gonna dress this up cosmetically however you would like anyways to match your world. So it's entirely up to you. Once you have done that, we're going to go around to the front and then you can grab a little bit of glass and I'll use a little bit of glass here and just place one piece there, one piece there and one piece there just to make it look a little bit better. You don't want to place glass in the middle here because then you won't be able to get to this chest. If you place a solid block over top of this chest here, you're not going to be able to open it. And if you place glass here, then you're going to have to access the chest from the back of the farm. So just keep that in mind. So the only thing left to do is to grab your minecart and place it down on this right hand unpowered rail. And then I'm going to turn my world into survival. Grab the tool that you want to harvest. Again, if you want to harvest just the coral, then use the pickaxe. If you want to harvest just the seagrass, then use the shears. If you want to harvest both, then use the silk cut shears. And then we want to turn and turn this on. Every time that this minecart goes over top of these detector rails, it's going to release one of the bone meal into the ground and allow it to start making seagrass and coral. And then you're going to hold down whatever button that you use to mine. Mine is R2 because I'm using a Xbox controller. So I'll usually just take a hair tie and wrap around the right hand uh, place of the controller that you hold on to, and then place the hair tie over top of the R2 button and it holds it down nicely. That way you can AFK. However, if you are playing on other devices, you're going to have to figure out how to AFK and hold down that button. Once you're done with it, you can go ahead and turn to the left and turn off that lever. 
and then place your cart all the way back up against that unpowered rail so it's ready to go next time. And then let's check the chest. Now it has been several minutes that I've been AFK at this, so I do have quite a bit. You're going to have some inside of your inventory from picking it up as well. That's totally normal. And you can see just how much this produces. Now again, because I'm using a silk touch pickaxe, I'm only going to get the coral. However, if I was using the shears, I'd be getting the seagrass as well. So that is going to wrap up both of these coral and seagrass farms. I hope that this really helped you guys out. Again, these farms do take an extreme amount of time to design and build, and then also to test and test and work all the bugs out. That way I'm giving you guys a quality farm and a quality product. So any likes would be greatly appreciated. It really does help out the video and help out the channel. It helps a lot of people find and discover my channel. If you really like this video, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button along with the bell notification. That way you'll get notifications for each and every time that I upload a video. If you like this tutorial and you want to see more tutorials like it, I have a ton of tutorials on my channel, a bunch of redstone tutorials, farm tutorials, I have let's plays, I have all kinds of videos. Go ahead and check them out. This coral farm and seagrass farm is almost a must have, especially if you're building a big farm like a creeper farm to where the coral fans have replaced the functionality of the buttons. And they are almost a necessity for making any kind of a efficient mob farm. If you are going to build my creeper farm on my channel for Bedrock Edition, it's really going to help you out to have a coral farm like this. That way you don't have to go and manually collect all of the coral fans in survival mode. This will make it fast and easy and simple to just AFK for a little bit and get all of the coral fans that you need. If you have not checked out my creeper farm, I highly recommend doing so. This creeper farm puts out 16 stacks plus an hour, and it is an incredible farm for the Bedrock Edition. So if you want to check that farm out, I'm going to link that right up in the top right corner right now. If you guys have any suggestions, then please leave a comment below. If you'd like to see any videos or you have any requests for some farms, then drop a comment below and let me know what you would like to see. This has been RSB, and I'll see you next time.